You're listening to Yoked, conversations with real life yogis, produced by Kelly Sunrose and Samadhi Rush. The mission of this podcast is to share the teachings of yoga as applied to everyday life by real people through interviews, conversations, Q&A sessions, and more. Learn more at yokedpodcast.com. In today's episode, we'll catch up on news and events and talk a little about body politics in yoga. Thanks to all who have made purchases in the Sunrose Yoga shop this month. This month, I'm donating 15% of all proceeds to causes that align with the mission of the community. And this month, we're supporting Ocean Conservancy. Thank you so much, everybody. To support good things while doing yoga, head on over to the Sunrose Yoga Shop. And that's sunroseyogashop.com. If you have a suggestion, request, or question, please connect by emailing me, sunroseyoga at gmail.com. I thank you so much for being here. So, hi everybody, Kelly here. I have some news for you. First, oh my gosh, the time has come. The Wildcat Yoga Club is opening its doors next week. I have been holed up in my studio, building the site, revisiting past practices, updating them, and planning new events and videos. If you haven't already signed up for an invitation to the Wildcat Yoga Club, you can do so by following the link in the show notes. There will be special gifts and goodies and offers shared to that list first. Also, we already have our first month's events on the calendar and you won't want to miss them. We have our monthly meditation circle, our active listening group, and our embodied voice group. These are real-time online video or voice calls where we practice together. Now, I make a recording of all of them, and those will be archived in the library of the Wildcat Yoga Clubhouse. Um, and if you haven't been following along, the Wildcat Yoga Club is our online home for practice, study, and connection. It's a monthly or annual subscription to a private membership site, our clubhouse, where you will have access to the already eight years worth of audio and video yoga and meditation practices, all of our at-home retreats, plus a whole bunch of new stuff. We'll be constantly adding to the site. And as I mentioned, there are monthly classes online that are included in your membership. Additionally, club members will receive a 15% discount to all of my immersions, all of the products in the Sunrose Yoga Shop, and to retreats. So it's like pretty amazing, I think. And, you know, since I've been doing this sharing practices for eight years now, um, I have had a lot of contact with you, the listeners, the practitioners, and I wanted to create a site where all of you could connect with each other and to really get a sense of how the yoga practice is making a difference in the lives of your fellow community members. And and so I'm really excited for all of you to get to know each other on the site and we'll have lots of opportunities for that. Um, for an annual membership, it is 150 US dollars and you can also set up a, a monthly subscription, which is $15 per month. So super duper excited Uh, Head on over to the show notes and click on the link requesting an invitation to make sure that you get the email 
first about some really fun um, offers that will be accompanying the grand opening of the Wildcat Yoga Club. Thanks, everybody. Okay, second, um, I have a self-care immersion challenge that is launching on Yoga Anytime on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. So um, it's a 10-day exploration of deep self-care as practiced through the yamas and the niyamas of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. It is deep. It is really chock full. It's almost like its own course. It's almost like a 10 day course. There are movement practices, lectures, discussions, journal prompts, meditations, suggestions for bringing these practices into your real life in a real and useful way, a non cheesy, non hokey way. They the practices I've included are things that are like super fresh from my own yoga lab, and I'm really excited to share them. As always, everybody's welcome to try yoga anytime for free for 30 days by using the code MAGIC, M-A-G-I-C. Um, I'll post more about that when it comes up, but just save the date if you're interested. Third. I am teaching at the Sedona Yoga Festival, March 9th through the 12th. You guys know I love Sedona, and I'm super excited to get back there and to connect with a whole new community of yogis. And I'm also so super passionate about the workshops I'm teaching and to be a part of the vision of this festival. This is a really great festival. There is a trauma-informed yoga teacher training um, track as part of the festival. If you're interested in that, you should definitely check it out. My students will receive 11% off ticket price by using the code Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, when you check out over at SedonaYogaFestival.com. If you're going, make sure you let me know by emailing or connecting on social media. I'm super excited. Finally, this is a little ways off, but our spring immersion is already on my mind. I am deep in the curriculum planning phase and creation part of this course, and I'm super excited to explore the Bhagavad Gita with you. We will meet for six weeks online in April and May. And these immersions are just about my favorite thing in the world endure them. So keep your eyes open for that. Also, remember Wildcat Yoga Club members get a 15% discount. Oh, finally, really finally. Um, I'm pregnant. Uh, surprise. <laughs> anyway, um, we are expecting a baby in our midst in midsummer. And because of that, a few of the retreats that are on my schedule are being shifted to attune to my new family situation. So um, most notably, our Sedona retreat in October will be moved to a later date. Um, as soon as I have that sorted out, I'll let you know. My Portland retreats are shifting as well, um, just because when you are pregnant, or at least when I'm pregnant, I find that I need a little more space for the actual growing of the baby. And so uh, rather than two mini retreats this spring, I think we're just going to have one and it's going to be in May so that we can spend a little more time outside. But Stay in touch on the newsletter and my website. I will post all of that as soon as it comes. Thanks for understanding. And I'm excited to, you know, keep you in the loop on what's happening there. Thank you so much for being here. Love. Martha Graham said, the body never lies. 
It is a barometer telling the state of the soul's weather to all who can read it. And this we know to be one of those deep bone truths where the mouth says one thing, but the body knows otherwise. We know. We say yes when we mean no. The body knows. We say we're okay. We're not okay. The body knows. Truth has a feeling. And this is also true for yoga teachers, for parents, for guides of any sort in our communications with others about the body. Parents whose self-talk creates an environment of body shame. Healthcare providers who can't see beyond a number on a scale. Our words and our behavior reveal our own patterns and our most secret beliefs. People make all kinds of assumptions about wellness, health, ambition, intelligence, and even morality based on our body mass index or our outer conformity with physical ideals. So how does this show up in a yoga class? Well, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. And through physical manipulation of the body, where a teacher uses their hands to force the, the student's body into a particular shape, where the, the teacher has something in mind and is, in a sense, molding or forcing the student's body into the shape. That can be a way of revealing the teacher's you know, body beliefs. Additionally, um, through the communication of attainment of a particular visual form as the aim of practice. This has happened to me even recently where I've been in a class where the teacher starts out by talking about how yoga is more than than just poses, but then we get to the, I'm using air quotes here, the peak pose, and um, most of the people in the room can't do the peak pose without props or other support and the teacher even shaming them and laughing at them. And, and this of course communicates volumes. And, and finally, um, another obvious place that this shows up in a yoga class is by or when conversations are avoided altogether when someone is working with an obvious or even an obvious, unobvious but known difference or limitation. Ignoring it is the equivalent of ignoring the human being. And it's a way of communicating this practice, it's not for you. And it shows up in other ways um, through languaging, through classroom management, through the use or um, non-use of props and support, and even labeling um, the use of props as not being in the full pose. So what can we do? Well, I might sound like a broken record here, but part of my practice is to frequently ask the question, why do I practice yoga? And is what I'm doing supporting that purpose for practice? Is what I'm doing helping? And so those are questions that can be asked and answered by any student, by every student. And, you know, if your practice isn't supporting your reasons for practice. For example, you know, if you practice in order to love and accept yourself, but you leave class thinking, oh, I'll get it next time. Or if I keep practicing, then I'll be able to do this pose and then I'll be okay. Then that's obviously not supporting your purpose because the purpose should be supported all the time, 
not when you've attained something, not once you've gotten to a certain level. Your practice should be supporting you and it should be supporting the life you want to be leading. So anyone can answer and ask and answer those. And and I would go so far to say is, you know, if the practices aren't supporting your purpose, you should get out of there. You should find new teacher, new practice, new approach, and you can do that. There are so many ways of approaching and so many different amazing professional teachers and studios and communities that it is possible for you to be totally supported in your practice. And, you know, as if it feels daunting or if you're in a situation that doesn't feel correct and you don't even know what to do next, like, just let me know and we can talk about it because there is something for you. Similarly, I think if you're teaching, you should frequently revisit the question, why do I teach yoga? And then is what I'm offering supporting those aims. Additionally, I think it's super potent to ask the question, who is this for? Who is my offering for? And take an honest look at what you're offering. Really get to know, you know, look at who is showing up to your class. Look at how um, the students are engaging with the practices. It's one thing to challenge the students to work at their edge. But if at any point in the class, you look around and, you know, there's only one person who is doing the project and no one else can even begin or there's nothing for them, then there's a problem. Take an honest look at your sequences, your language use, your classroom management, and and how those things communicate your, your unconscious preferences, biases, and beliefs. Compare your vision of who you want the class to be for with actually who shows up and how they are supported when they do show up. So if you're a teacher and you find that your offerings are at odds with your mission, then evolve. Educate yourself. Study yourself. Be truly honest about your motivations and the environment you are creating with your offerings. And just because you've done things a certain way doesn't mean you have to continue Once you have a realization, your capacity and ability to change will inspire students. Your students want to make changes too. And if they see you engaged actively in self-study and in that shift, they will know it is possible. I can do it too. What we do every day, what we do throughout our week is who we are. Our practice is who we are becoming. And that is powerful. If there is a disconnect, then we have an obligation to shift. Shifting, changing, evolving, it's all possible. Let your work, your practice, your words reflect your values, your vision. I'm excited for us. We can do it. And as always, I want to hear about your experience. Um, What body revelations have you had in your practice or while in class? How have you been supported by classroom environments or teachers? How, if at all, have you felt unsupported by a particular environment or teacher? Share your experiences by commenting, by emailing, um, maybe even sending in a voice memo and we could include that in our next episode. It is so helpful and we are all in this together. 
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Take the very best care. Love. As always, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Complete show notes are available at yokedpodcast.com. And please feel free to connect by emailing sunroseyoga at gmail.com. Today's episode is made possible by the Wildcat Yoga Club, our online yoga community. The clubhouse is opening the end of January. Membership in the club gives you access to over eight years of past podcasts and all of the forthcoming audio and video practices, plus lectures, tutorials, Q&A sessions, and monthly group online classes, plus discounts on all courses, retreats, and products, all for $15 per month or $150 per year. I'm so excited for you to all connect with each other, yourself, and this practice in the Wildcat Yoga Club. To receive an invitation, click the link in the show notes.